Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create a text object using Text Mesh Pro. And then we're going to take a look at the basics of the tool. So let's get started. So first off, we're going to hide this title that was created with Text Mesh Pro. So we'll simply select these objects and deactivate them. Now we're going to create an empty game object, Control Shift N, and we'll rename this object. Now we're going to add a component to this object of type mesh, and then we will select Text Mesh Pro. Now a Text Mesh Pro component was added along with a mesh renderer and a mesh filter. Now the Text Mesh Pro custom editor panel has two sections. The first area is your text input box where you'll type your text. And then the second section is for your font setting where you can define the font type, font size, and various attributes for your text. And then there's also a custom material editor where you can select a shader as well as additional properties, textures for your font. So let's begin by typing some text. I'm going to move the scene around just so we can see all of our text. Now Text Mesh Pro supports uh, rich text and there's different uh, tags that we can enter to format our text. So we're going to do just some simple stuff right now. Let's say we want to add a color and uh, color the word Text Mesh. So uh, the way you do that is you can type color equal some color. Uh, there are multiple predefined colors, like yellow, for example. Uh, so that's one way to enter a color. The other way is, since I'm kind of lazy and didn't feel like typing color all the time, is you can enter the number sign and then the hexadecimal code to represent the color that you want. Next, I'd like to have the word pro a different color. So we're going to choose uh, some kind of blue. And we want the rest of our text to remain white. So we'll end the color right here. Good. Now, the next thing we could do is uh, let's make uh, the word example. Let's uh, make that italic just for fun. Let's make uh, this same word bold. So we'll go here and say bold. Uh, let's uh, underline the word action just because we can. And let's make sure the underline does not encompass the period. Now Text Mesh Pro uh, supports superscript and subscript so just for fun let's add a superscript after the exclamation point. So superscript will fake a trademark. There we go. Now I'm not going to put in a subscript, but you know it's similar to superscript, and uh, the tag is sub as opposed to sup. Now Text Mesh Pro also supports. Uh, I'm not going to go over all the different types of tags, but another one that I'm going to add right now is I can add the size attribute. So let's say we want to make the letter e bigger. You know, often when you look at a body of text, the first letter can be larger than the rest. So we're going to go size equal. Now there are two ways you can define the size. You can enter a size like 48 for example and now it made all of the text 48 points. So we're going to end our size attribute here. So the way it works is um, when I end my size attribute it defaults back to the font size that was specified here. So we basically told it make the E 48. Now that's one way to enter the size attribute. Another way is to use the plus or minus sign, so I can go plus. Now in this case, it would be 36 plus 48, which is obviously too big. So we'll shrink that down to like plus 14, for example. Uh, so now we have our text, uh, larger E with underlined, superscript, colors, looks kind of cool. So let's uh, review now. Let's take a look at the settings panel. Now here is where we select our font type. So right now we have Arial selected, we have Impact, Snap It, those are the ones that I've generated right now. Now the font that's being used says Arial SDF. SDF stands for Sign Distance Field. And although Text Mesh Pro works with normal bitmap font atlases, it was specifically designed and take advantage of Sign Distance Field. The advantage of that is if you look at our text, if I zoom out, it still remains super clean. But if I zoom in at any uh, zoom, 
the text remains super clean and super sharp, unlike a bitmap font. So let me zoom out of there. Okay, so let's go back here. And in terms of my size, if I want to change the size, I can change it to any size. It's all dynamic. Uh, character spacing. Well, let's say we feel that the characters, depending on the font that you use, some of them you might feel like you want to squeeze in the letters a little bit so you can adjust the character spacing. Right now I'm using my mouse, so it's kind of hard to go smoothly there. But you can see what it does right there. Let's reset that back to zero. Line length. Okay, what is this? Well, um, if I wanted to break this down to multiple lines of text, I could go in here and basically enter a carriage return, let's say right here where the word in is. Now, another way to deal with multiple lines is I can enable word wrapping. Now, when I do that, this yellow uh, control shows up. And if I choose, I can grab this with my mouse and drag it to define where the word wrapping should occur. So we'll leave it right here. And let's zoom back in so now we'll see our text better. So line length can be controlled here, or it can be controlled in the user interface. And basically everything I'm showing here can be controlled by script as well. But today we're just going to focus on the editor panel here inside the Unity editor. Now line spacing, since we have multiple lines, that can be adjusted. So we'll leave it back to zero. Now, line justification. Obviously, we have left justified, like we have here. Center justification. Right justification. And then justified where both ends of the text are flush. So let's go to center. Next, we have various anchor positions from top left to bottom to center. So let's just go to center. I'll remove it here. Then we have different mapping options. I'll cover those shortly uh, thereafter, but not right now. So we've seen word wrapping, enable, disable. Text Mesh Pro supports kerning. So if I enable kerning, um, we can see a slight adjustment between the T and the E and the P and the R. So for example, uh, Text Mesh Pro uses custom font assets. Right now it's the Arial SDF font asset. So if I was to select this font asset, I would see that we have a custom panel again for the font asset. But in this font asset, we can see the original point size, what the font was, what the line height is, where the underline is located, for example. As you can see, I can adjust that. Um, this is where I would select uh, how bold is bold. So if I do this, um, I can adjust the bold. It's kind of hard with a mouse again to do that nicely. And depending on the font that you pick, some fonts are skinnier than others, others are, are thicker and uh, the font level, the boldness level, um, you get different results depending on the font. In terms of the slant, uh, this is how I control the slant of my italic. But anyway, this is where the kerning pairs are defined. So in order to add, uh, well, let me restate that, uh, TextMesh Pro comes with a built-in font asset creator. Uh, you can import any true type or uh, open type fonts and from there you can generate your font asset and it will generate the signs this sign distance field font atlas for you as well um, when you do create this new font you can select to import the kerning table or not if you choose not to or if you choose to and the pair that you're uh, wanting to adjust doesn't exist you can simply adjust it or add it so for example let me delete the t and the e Okay, so we'll get rid of the T and the E and we'll add it manually. So we're saying we want the T, capital T, and we want lowercase e to be added. So we're going to add this kerning pair. And then right here, I can adjust it in the, like, we can look at it visually being adjusted. There we go. So let's go back here. And so that's for kerning. Next, we have override HTML color. And as you uh, saw, I skipped over color. So what does color do? Well, color does color, right? So if I go here and I go red or I pick any color, you can see that the text is being uh, colorized by whatever color I pick. Now, you'll also notice that as I do this, the words that have a color tag are not changing. Well, the assumption is if you bothered to specify a color tag, it's probably because that's the color you want. Um, so color here uh, doesn't change the color tag. Now the override, uh, what the override does is it basically overrides the color tag so you can get one single color. Now there's another way you can adjust the color. Let's make this white again. 
is in the shader itself, you can define the color for the face or the border of the text. So if I was to adjust the color here, now here it tints everything of that color. Okay. So we've seen pretty much all these options except the mapping options, and we're going to take a look at those right now. So real quick, um, by using sign distance field, not only do we get super clean looking fonts at any uh, zoom factor, um, we also get some extra bonuses. So for example, if I wanted to add a border around this text, all I do is I go into my custom material editor and I can add a border around my text. So let's make this border uh, 0.5. Whoops, that's way too much. 0.05. Eh, not enough. 0.1. There we go. Now, I'm zooming in so you can see it. Um, I can also adjust the softness around this border. So as you can see, I can soften the border. So I'll leave it sharp anyway. Now, I can choose a texture, for example, for the face of my font. So we'll pick, uh, I'll pick any texture just so you can see quickly the texture being added. Okay, now to explain this, these mapping options, I'll just pick, in this case, a gradient that's left to right. I will override our HTML colors so that we can see uh, what's going on with the text. Now, as you can see, this texture is being mapped uh, onto each character um, because the mapping option is per character. But if I chose line, we can see that the texture now is being mapped on each line. So from start to end, start to end, and since the lines are not of the same width, uh, the mapping is being different. Now, if I was to choose paragraph, well, then it would map from the first character to the last one. So basically, the longest line, everything gets mapped the same way, so your, your gradient would be lined up. Now, these options are also av available vertically. So for example, if I was to switch to this vertical gradient, and let's go back to per character, now I could say map it per line. Well, per line it goes from, okay, so let me go back here. So per character goes from top of the character to bottom of the character, top of character to bottom of character. Per line goes from tallest character to lowest character or lowest descender. And then paragraph is basically from top to the bottom of the paragraph. And those are the mapping options. Now, I'm not going to go over all the features or much more of the features of the material uh, custom material inspector, but this is where you would actually, uh, actually, let me show you the uh, texture on the border. So I can change the border color. Uh, let's change the face so we can do something different. Uh, let's add, I'll just pick like some brush metal for the face, and I will pick the same gradient color that we add on the border, just to make some cool looking font. So there you go. So anyway, in the custom material editor, this is where you would select um, to add beveling. So if I click bevel, then I can add a bunch of beveling options and tweak all these parameters. Uh, I can also add glow. I don't know what glow is defined here. Actually, none. Well, it's white. So just for fun, I could add glow. And move our glow around. make it much brighter and outer glow so now we can see that we had a glow this is not very pretty but you get the picture okay let's uh, collapse this and show you uh, let's go back to our uh, example of the text that we created so I'm gonna delete this thing here that we just created actually that's not deleted let's uh, let's say we want to add a shadow to this so the way I could add a shadow or fake a shadow is I will take this object, I will create a duplicate. Now once I have my duplicate, um, in the case of Text Mesh Pro, we only have one, uh, in the case of Arial, one custom font asset. And the same uh, font asset is being referenced by the various materials that we have. So for example, if I go to my font folder, I have a Arial shadow material that was here. The way I created that material is you simply right click and I added a contextual menu that allows you to duplicate materials without losing reference to the font asset itself. 
So that way I can create the shadow material, which is something I already created, and I can drag this material onto the object that I want to become the shadow. Now we didn't see much, uh, that's because they're on top of each other. If I move it away, now we can see that we fake the shadow. And it's that simple. So the original title that I showed you was made up of a font with some border treatment uh, with basically a shadow added. As a matter of fact, if we look at this text, just for fun, I've got a aerial metal here. So if I drag it here, now you can see that this text now has this cool bevel style on it with highlights. Uh, again, I kept aluminum in, inside the letters, but I can quickly change the look. Let's uh, move the shadow a little bit further out. Point one, so it's behind. So as you can see, by simply dragging a new material, which was, that's the one that we had for the title, this is the metal one that I should have showed you, and let's see, which one did we use? We have border, oh yeah, so that's one, two, oh, we never created one with the rainbow or whatever that I used. But anyway, so I digress. So as you've seen here, I'm going to stop there because the video were past 15 minutes. Um, this was a quick overview of uh, Text Mesh Pro in terms of the editor panel and how you work with the tool inside the Unity editor. Uh, hopefully uh, you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to post them. Until next, next time, thanks for watching.